You know, I could say that I'm American, but that doesn't seem quite right. I grew up in Cleveland, Ohio. The place where we live is uh, so close, it's just a foot distance to the water. And I grew up in the Philippines. Dayuhan, they call it Dayuhan, in other words, um, somebody that came that's not from there. I had to always explain to people where the Philippines was. <laughs> most famous images, one of the most famous early images, are of the Asayan people called the Pintados because when the Spanish encountered them they were completely tattooed basically from head to foot. There were a lot of damage there, especially in that part where they try to erase the history like because they were considered like the devil worshippers or whatever because they worship like, you know, the nature. So they, they try to erase the, the whole culture and try to bring them to like you know their version of I guess God. The, the most consistent part of being being Filipino for me in the home life was mostly was just like food. And, and in the Philippines, they absolutely you know praise that they have food the next day. They cook for people that come in that you don't even know them and they fit them. I don't know. They're good singers, a lot of food. Uh, you know, Manny Pacquiao, that's one of their biggest legacies now. Yeah, most of my friends growing up were white. Um, and people never knew what race I was. My grandmother, Margarita, she is very dark. Every time they look in that mirror, they're going to see an Asian face staring back at them. Yeah, my, my, my mom is this, my dad is that. To be honest with you, they don't want to be noticed. Just blend in. If you're just Asian, you're Chinese, that, type, that sort of thing, like little kids coming up to you thinking like, you know, karate. You know, we didn't do much that was really Filipino. But that kind of hurts in some kind of way because you know every culture but yours. When I first moved, went to the Philippines and people asked me, oh, what are you? I'm like, well, I'm American. And then after living there for some time and going to high school and everything, now I considered myself more Filipino than I was American. Don't really like hang out specifically with like Filipino people. We just saw those guys like for family parties and like sometimes like, you know, holidays and stuff, like special occasions. Especially ones that are born here, or even ones that were born there and then grew up here. They like kind of lost that. in the Philippines, did you ever see anybody with tattoos? No. Tattooing customs that were once you know, completely on the verge of disappearing in the Philippines have sort of been revived. I just learned it when I came to America because it was do different kinds of documentary. Uh, there are some regions in, southern, in the southern Philippines, especially in Mindanao, where there is a, t a tradition of tribal tattooing that still exists amongst elders, but it's very dangerous uh, to go there. So basically make yourself a kidnapping target, which they're very famous for doing in the last few years. Uh, Filipinos get tattooed when they're 13, get their... Those are all sacred um, rituals that become an adult that way, you know. In fact, I was amazed when I uh, heard about those tattoos that there is out there, that that's actually their custom, part of the Filipino custom. It means nothing, nothing in English. It seems like people are feared about what I, what I, I don't know what it is. Oh, they're a bunch of warriors, dude. That's where, um, in Bisayan region in general, um, that's where Screamer started. Sometimes when you had to protect the village, once you got old enough to hold a weapon, you had, you had to protect your village. So they taught you how to use a weapon first. A 13, 14 year old kid with a blade, it was easier for him to fight than to fight on hand-to-hand -hand combat. The amount of research they do into these traditions um, is fascinating to me and, and I myself was learning a lot. It's really going to be a spiritual journey on Heather's project and, and a rites of passage when she finally gets a meaningful and sacred tattoo that at least will basically explore what 
place and you know what family she's from and you know how many generations before it stopped tattooing you know etc. Um, it's sort of reconnecting to this past you know a sense of place a sense of identity. I miss it. I'm, I miss to go back. That's why I said that's why when every time I say oh the blood is going home I always have that I always have that comment when somebody asks me.